Welcome. Uh, section 7.3. Today we are talking about uh, random generation of linear extensions, and this will involve uh, application of Markov chains. Um, so the, the first half of the lecture will just be a brief introduction into Markov chains and uh, coupling technique to uh, get hand on the mixing uh, time of Markov chains. So let's just start. What what is a Markov chain? A Markov chain. Is, is a stochastic process which is uh, memoryless, uh, discrete time, discrete space, and uh, yeah. So what what do we need for the Markov chain? We need a in our case the best would be to have a finite state space. Let's call it S, and uh, now. The Markov chain itself will be as a as a realization as a sequence of uh, events in this in this space. So this is a sequence of random events from S, and uh, and now. We are interested in in the probability that at a given time t the state is a, and well, if we arrive at time t, then we have already seen the uh, events of previous times. So let's condition on them. We have x t minus one equals b and x t minus 2 equals b2 and so on x0 equals uh, bt and given all this we can we can say that the probability of being in a is just what you get when you know when that in the step before you've been at b so this is equal to the probability of xt equals a, xt minus 1 equals b. So this is uh, the memoryless property. And then we have a second property, which is kind of the time independent. This should be the very same PAB uh, independent of which t you plug in. So this is. This is the definition of the, of the Markov chain. And now uh, you have these values, PABs, these probabilities. And from them, you can build the transition matrix. This is just the matrix with entries PAB. And uh, so let's call it P. It will take a time until we have p four posets again. Um, okay, and now if we have a p zero in R plus S, some initial distribution. So for your for your experiment, you you choose x zero from the distribution p zero. And then you then you let it run, and then at the time t you get some some distribution, and this is simply uh, p t times p zero. So you uh, take a power of this matrix and uh, and uh, multiply from the right with the uh, with the initial distribution, and this is the distribution. Yeah, so this is this is uh, the, the setting, and, and let me let me briefly uh, remark that uh, instead of 
talking about Markov chains, we could also talk about uh, random walks. So on the state space, we have a, we can, we can build a graph with this as a vertex set and as edges we take every pair AB where the directed edge where the probability is uh, greater than zero, then you have a graph and <coughs> you can you can view this uh, Markov chain as a as a random walk. On, on S with with a given with a given uh, with weighted edges with weight P A B um, yeah now uh, let's let's go back to this to this matrix, to the matrix P here. So, um, because we are talking about probabilities, because when you are in state in state B, then uh, you have to take a move. If in the next, if you are in, in B at time t minus one, you will be somewhere at at time a, but at time t, in some a at time t. So what this is telling us is that if we left multiply by p by one, we get one. So uh, one is a left eigen value of the matrix p, and now from this we see that there exists a pi uh, such that. P times pi equals pi, and uh, and such a such a pi will be called a stationary distribution of the Markov chain. And um, yeah, the the uh, nice case is when you have a unique stationary distribution and to get to get hand on, on this property there is a notion of ergodicity and here it is a Markov chain M is ergodic well there are different there are different ways of describing it so one is that the transition graph So the graph on which the, mar uh, the random walk is running is uh, is connected and parallel. Um, the just to I'm, I'm not going into formal details about a per periodicity, but uh, if you have if you have loops with non-negative uh, values at all vertices, then, then the aperiodicity is given. And um, yeah, so this is uh, ergodic. And another another equivalent way to say this is that uh, for every a and b in the state space, there exists a t such that. Such that uh, the probability of being in A at type T under the hypothesis that you start in B is larger than zero. So between any two, you can commute in some in some uh, number of steps. Yeah, so this is the definition, actually, for the definition we might only take the first one and the second one is already a statement. 
Um, uh, is it really a periodic or is this key? Because uh, uh, that's it. it, it be okay. oh. <coughs> this is for every t greater than t, right? For all t greater than t, you get it. Yes, yes. It's not just that you arrive there, but uh, you can arrive for every time behind this. Um, yes. Um, now here is a fundamental theorem of finite uh, Markov chains. It says that if M is ergodic, then there exists a unique stationary distribution. And, uh, and moreover, if M is symmetric, meaning that the matrix is symmetric, meaning that the transition from A to B, the probability is the same as the transition probability from B to A, then in this case, uh, the stationary distribution is the uniform distribution on the state space. So, uh, and another, another thing to say about this is that actually you, you arrive at the stationary distribution if you start with any p0 and you let the time go to infinity, then this will be the stationary distribution. When the distribution is zero, yeah. Uh, what, what, with whatever distribution you start, you arrive at. Um, yeah. Okay, and and this uh, can can be used for efficient sampling from from large uh, state spaces. So the, if the S is large and you can and you can get hand on the on the time it takes this one to get close to pi, and this is. Uh, Approximating a random element from the from the given uh, state space. Yeah. So uh, example let's think of the hypercube Qn, and uh, here is a our transition probabilities, PAB. So um, we want we want the chain to stay in in the same space, in the same place with one half probability. So this is a this is a loop. This is guaranteeing the periodicity. And then uh, other other options are that from from the given vector b, you go to some neighbor in the hypercube. So what are the neighbors? Uh, a equals b plus a uh, time now plus e i uh, standard basis vector, and the transition probability here should be one over two n and zero otherwise. So this is a transition gives the data for the transition matrix P on the hypercube, and uh, yeah, this gives a random walk. And now, now the question: If you start in some vertex, how long how long does it take you? How long do you have to stroll around until you have left the 
lost the in initialization bias. So, uh, how long uh, need we walk to shake off the So this is a question, and this question, this is a, a way of asking for the mixing time. So the time you need until this initialization bias is, say, small, is the mixing time. Yeah, and to, to make these things uh, formal, we, we need to some Again, some definition, some terminology. So let's uh, start with the definition of the total variational distance. So uh, this is a measure for the distance between two distributions. So let uh, mu and pi distributions on S, then the total variational distance of, of the two. This is written as a, as a norm of a difference in the, and, and that this is this <coughs> the maximum over a subset of S, and here we take the measure of A minus the pi measure of A. Okay, so this is, this is the definition, and um, yeah, to show you that this is indeed a norm, and to get a better understanding of it, we are going to uh, compare it with a norm that we know better. And <coughs> so think about this maximization uh, thing. If you look if you look at at a, at an element of S and you look at mu, uh, uh, mu minus pi, then this is either positive or negative. And to maximize, you collect all the all the states where it's positive in the set A. And because it's uh, it's di distributions, the value of this of S is one. So uh, the total the sum of the guys where it is uh, negative is as much as the sum of the guys where it's positive. So formally, um, this max A subset S of mu of A minus pi of A is equal to just one half the sum of all states in the state space uh, mu of s minus pi of s and, and this is simply the one norm of the two distributions. Yeah. Okay, and um, and now here is here is uh, a quantification of what we what we need uh, what we mean with with uh, mixing time. We we define uh, tau epsilon to be the maximum of all states, the minimum of all t 
And now here, the norm of Pt a minus phi is less than epsilon. So we want we want that the total variational distance of the distribution you get when you start in a and you do t steps. Uh, the the dif distance from the stationary stationary distribution should be small. And uh, yeah. So for each a fixed a, we look at the minimum time, and then we look at the worst a. And this is uh, the number of steps we need to reach epsilon uh, mixing. Good. And um, and now it come we come to couplings. So couplings are a technique to get hand on on this. And um, so formally, a coupling. A coupling um, of M of a Markov chain M with a transition matrix P is a is a pair X T Y T of copies of M running in parallel. So what does it mean? This means that if you ask for the probability that uh, xt is A under the hypothesis that uh, y t minus 1, uh, no, this should be the first one, xt minus 1, yt minus 1 is equal to uh, B, B prime, and this should only depend on the B, not on the B prime. So this is equal to P A B, and and symmetrically the probability is that this is a prime under the very same uh, condition should this time only depend on the second. Entry, so it should be a prime, b prime. So the the second, if you if you focus on one of the two, uh, the evolution is as it is in the Markov chain. The second component is just running in parallel without being without being influential. Yeah, and uh, so this is a definition of a coupling, and here is this. The coupling lemma the coupling lemma says uh, if you have a coupling x t y t a coupling of the Markov chain M uh, and if you know that for whatever initial states A and B, the probability that x t is not equal to y t under the hypothesis that you started the two uh, copies in A and B respectively, and this is small. This is bounded. If this probability that the two are different is small, so so with high probability they came together somehow. Uh, T will come into into the into the picture now. Uh, then the tau epsilon that we defined. Uh, up there 
the total the, this total variation distance is the, the time it needs to read to to be epsilon close to the to the uh, stationary distribution is at most t. So if you if you can get hand at the, at the time t where the two uh, are are equal, then you can get hand at the mixing time. Yeah. So uh, maybe maybe this is this is a bit abstract and we look at an example. Uh, think of think of the example we have up there, the hypercube and um, and the Markov chain that we defined on the hypercube. We can we can easily find a nice coupling for this uh, So how do we proceed? Uh, a coupling for the Markov chain on QN. So uh, I mean the initialization is is uh, trivial. You start into in two vertices A and B, and now given given x i and y i, we are going to describe how to get to the next to the next uh, instances of the two Markov chains, and uh, how do we proceed? We choose a position. J in M uniformly at random and we choose choose a value let's call it uh, V from 0, 1 uniformly at random so this is a fair coin and now what we what we do is uh, we define xi plus 1 is equal to uh, xi with coordinate j replaced by the value given by v. And for, for yi plus 1, uh, we do the very same. So we pick a position, we throw a coin, and we replace the entry at this position by the value of this chain. And now uh, I leave it to you to verify that uh, if you look just at x or if you look just at y, you have an instance of the Markov chain up there. And uh, now, now let's let's. Uh, talk about about this. We, we want to see whether at some point the two Markov chains, the x copy and the y copy, are the same. So uh, when at some point time I have chosen a coordinate, then from this time on the two will agree on this coordinate. So as soon as I have chosen all the coordinates, the two will be the same. So um, let's let's make this observation as soon as uh, coordinate J was selected X and Y will be uh, will agree on coordinate and uh, yeah so we we have to we have to understand how many tries do we need 
until we have chosen all the coordinates. And this is a coupon collector's problem. So, uh, to get xt equals yt, uh, look at coupon collector. And uh, it's known that the coupon collector problem has an has a uh, expected value of m log m, and actually, if you if you multiply with a nice constant, you can make the probability that that it's not done uh, as small as as you want. So this is this is a, the number. This is a mixing time of the Markov chain on the cube. It's essentially n log n. And uh, it's an instance of what I, I, I said at the beginning. You have an exponentially large uh, state space, 2 to the n vertices. And it takes, compared to the size of the, of the uh, state space, it takes very few steps to, to uh, get rid of the initial, initialization bias. Um, let me, let me expand on this, on this example a, a little bit more. So uh, here is a, here is a second um, example, which is closely related. What we are going to do is we take we take a copy of the Markov chain we have been discussing, and uh, then there is a zero vector, and we connect the zero vector to the one vector of a second copy. And uh, at these two vertices, we slightly change the probabilities. Maybe we just say that if you are here then with probability one half you go up instead of staying at your position. Yeah? And the same here. Now this is a then with the same probabilities now we have a state space twice as big. And uh, now if you look at this here, if if this is a starting position A and here we choose a starting position B for, for X and Y, for the two to couple, for the two to get together, one of them has to go through this bottleneck. And the pro probability of going through the bottleneck is very small because the probability of being at any given vertex of this copy is very small. It takes exponential time to reach this and go through the bottleneck. So on this, the mixing time is bad. Just uh, to give you an idea that it, it's a very special and very nice property to have uh, good mixing times. OK. But now, let's go to the proof of the coupling lemma. Proof of coupling lemma. So what we do is we choose uh, y0 equals b according to the stationary distribution of n. Yeah? So this is already in the in the good uh, in the in the good state, and now uh, now we look at some a, and we are interested in the probability that x t is an a. And uh, well, 
This is certainly larger than what we get if we put on it uh, an additional condition. So now we want to have Ft equals Yt and at the same time Yt in A. This is a stronger uh, requirement. Now, from this we can go to the complementary event or complementary set. So, the probability of the complement is 1 minus, uh, so this is 1 minus the probability of the complement, and now here is the probability of the complement. This is xt is not equal yt, and uh, this is a union with yt is not in A. And now for, for this probability we can take the union bound. 1 minus the probability that these two guys are not the same minus the probability that uh, this is not in A. And now if we if we look at, at these two parts, so this is a 1 minus, this is a probability that yt is uh, in A. And uh, now re remember that y was uh, initialized in the stationary distribution and it remains there. So, so these two things together are just pi of A. And, and this one, this is a capital T, this is, uh, we, assume, we assume that uh, this is a T we are talking about. So the probability here is bounded by epsilon. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is a computational part of the proof of the, of the coupling lemma. And now, uh, now we look at the, at the probability for the same thing with a bar replacing A. So we look at the complement and we get the very same uh, we get the very same result because A was was just some set. So the probability that uh, xt is in a bar is at least pi of a bar minus epsilon. And now again taking the complement stuff, we find that this is equivalent to saying that probability of uh, x if t being in a is at most pi of a plus epsilon. So, um, so this says that the, the a was, a, was arbitrary and the maximum over all A subset of S P T of A starting in little a minus pi of A is bounded by epsilon. Yeah, and this is this is the definition of the total variation distance between the two. P A T minus pi T V. The total variation distance of the two is small. And this completes the proof of the coupling lemma. When you when you have this probability being very small, then you're close to the to the uniform uh, to the stationary distribution. Good. So uh, this is 
where we finish the general uh, Markov chain theory. And, and from now on, we are going to talk about linear extensions. And we are going to devise a very special kind of coupling, very clever uh, setting. And uh, from this coupling, we can we will be able to see that uh, it is possible to sample a random linear extension in polynomial time, where the random uh, yeah, means that you sample from a distribution which in total variation of distance is very close to the uniform distribution. Poset with n elements, and uh, yeah. So let me introduce the graph of linear extensions of P. So this is G of P. And uh, well, it has has this vertex set, this the linear extensions of P, and uh, and we have we have the two linear extensions are an edge if and only if L and L prime differ by an adjacent transposition. So, as an example, let's look at let's look at uh, the poset n a b c d. And now here is the graph of linear extensions. A, B, C, D is one of the linear extensions. This is the one, the only one, where you go from a minimal directly to a maximal element. And then uh, A, C, B, D, and from here you can go to uh, C, A, B, D, or to A, C, A, C, D, B. And then you go to C A D B. So these are the five the five linear extensions, and this is the the graph of linear extensions of this example. Okay. Um, what we what we are going to use is D of L is equal to the degree of L in G of P. So the degree of a linear extension would be the number of adjacent pairs in this linear extensions which are incomparable in the poset. Um, yeah, and now with this, with this we can define uh, the Karsanov Kachian chain. 
this was introduced uh, in 1991, and uh, so it is it is a Markov chain uh, with elements in the linear extensions of P, and now we meet the transition probabilities of this, and and here is M L L prime will be uh, equal to 1 over 2n minus 1 if L L prime uh, form an edge in the graph of linear extension of P. So if this is an adjacent transposition and uh, yeah and, and with the remaining probability, we stay uh, at, at, the, at the thing we are. So 1 minus uh, d of L divided by 2n minus 1, we have, we have L equals L. So this, these are the are the transitions, transition probabilities that we that we use here. And just an observation, this is symmetric and therefore uh, we pi is uniform. The stationary distribution is a uniform distribution on the uh, on the so for the edges to go from L to L prime is one over two times n minus one. To go the other direction is the same. It they, it's unbalanced on the on the diagonal of the matrix. Yeah, and uh, let me let me just uh, remark on what. What they did, uh, Kasanov and Kachian uh, proof mixing in O of n to the six uh, polylog n, and they do it using using geometric. Arguments uh, and the geometry comes in by looking at the order polyto and uh, and with this geometric argument and the order polytope they they achieve at a bound conductance. G of P. So uh, I'm not going into to details, but uh, conductance is a parameter of a graph, and uh, if the, it can be used to to get bounds on the mixing time of Markov chains. So this is a, a very nice uh, argument that they use, and uh, yeah. But we are not going uh, along this line. We are going along a line which was initiated by Berkeley and Dyer in 1997. Uh, they use pass coupling so a variant of coupling that we are going to see in a moment uh, and a modified chain. So they don't analyze precisely this uh, chain by Kazanov and Kachian. They, they modify it. And so what we, what we need to describe this, we need a probability distribution on the integers from 1 to n minus 1. Um, so the 
sum of the pi is equal to 1. And now uh, for L equals x1 to xn, we let uh, tau i of L be the be the linear extension obtained by exchanging xi and xi plus one adjacent transposition here. Uh, not, need not be a link. This is just a, take it as a permutation. Uh, you can apply this to every permutation, of course. Xi to xn and. Uh, yeah, so here are the transition probabilities for for the modified chain. So since we're going to work with this, maybe we make this a prime. Uh, and now we have we have pi if the two are uh, form a graph in the uh, form an edge in the graph of linear extensions. But uh, but it, now the edge is this edge. So if if uh, L prime equals tau i of L, and uh, well, then we need to to again have the remaining probability on. If L prime is in extension, is in. L of P, yes. And uh, now in here we have to subtract all these events that uh, it can be done with a Kronecker delta tau i of L uh, is a linear extension. And this is if L equals a prime. So this is this is the transition probabilities, and now with these transition probabilities, uh, we are going to define a coupling along a path, and uh, and here again we need some. Some terminology, some definitions. So, <coughs> so thing is we define a pass, a transposition pass uh, for x and y linear extensions is a is a sequence. So we start with a with x and we have a C1 C2 dot dot CK and uh, this should be or let's make it an R such as the CK is a linear extension for all K in this in this pass and in addition uh, we require that uh, if dk is equal to x1 to xn, uh, if we have this given, and there is a pair i less than j of indices, such that uh, 
the CK plus 1 is obtained by exchanging the two. So all the other indices stay in place. It's a transposition, but it need not be an adjacent transposition. And uh, yeah, so in this case we write this is tau ij of zk. Um, yeah, and now now we do, this is a transposition pass, and now we define weights. And the weight of some z and tau ij of z should just be j minus r. This is the weight of uh, of such a pair, and of course now the the weight of x and y will be defined as uh, as a sum of the weights of two adjacent guys in a pass, but there are many paths maybe, and we take the minimum. So we take the minimum of the sum of the weights of zk, zk plus one, uh, sum over the case in question, that says uh, the thing cr is a transposition pass from x to y. This is the weight of of the pair. And now um, observation is that the weight of a pair is let's make some space and write it down. The weight of a pair is bounded by n choose two because uh, you because the diameter of the graph of linear extensions is bounded by n choose 2. We can get from every permutation to every other permutation, uh, even if you restrict to being linear extensions uh, on with at most n choose 2 adjacent transpositions. So this is the observation W X Y and choose two. Good. And now we can now we can define the path coupling. So the idea is as before, we start with x0 and y0, we start a coupling into arbitrary linear extensions. And uh, now we want to devise a, an evolution for the two. And, and here it is. Given xt and yt, we have to describe how to get to the next one, to the xt plus 1, yt plus 1. So uh, what we do is we choose a minimum weight transposition pass that connects the two. Xt to yt. And uh, now we choose choose i in n minus one uh, according to the distribution that we have defined. We we started with this distribution and uh, 
So the probability of choosing i is pi. And, uh, and then this is what we choose, and then we choose a, a c, the 0, and 0, 1, and this is with probability 1 half. So it's a fair coin. And now what we what we do is we define a sequence of of C's. So for J equals one to R uh, if the Z J is equal to tau I of C J minus one. So the next one is some, some tau ij of the previous one. And uh, if, we, if we omit the second one, then it's an adjacent transposition. So this would be an adjacent transposition at the position uh, xi, xi plus 1. Um, so if we, have, if we have this, then the zj is defined as 1 minus Cj minus one, and otherwise we take Cj equals Cj minus one. So we start with this uh, coin, and along the path, at some at some positions, we flip we flip this, and. Uh, and now what we what we define is tau i c of l is equal to uh, tau i of l if tau i of l is a linear extension and c is equal to one and it is L otherwise. Okay, and uh, and now we we are ready. We now we have the data to really define the next two elements here. Uh, X T plus one is equal to uh, tau i z0 of xt and and y t plus 1 is equal to tau i cr of yt so you apply you apply the adjacent transposition given by the i uh, depending on depending on the C and on the the fact that you again get a, a linear extension. Um, yeah, and for for the analysis, we also need uh, Z K prime, which is the tau i Z K of Okay. And uh, so this is the path coupling. And now the now we come to the to the main part of the analysis. We look at um, we look at a pair in our in our transposition pass, and we ask ourselves how is the weight of the prime versions related to the weight of the original versions. 
and So we look at uh, CK, CK plus one, um, and we know that the CK plus one is obtained from ZK by applying some transposition. So uh, we say that CK plus one is equal to tau AB of CK. And here is what we claim as the expectation of the weight of the prime versions is upper bounded by the weight of the original pair and then we add something uh, one half p a minus one minus p a minus p b minus one plus p b. So these four probabilities uh, play into it. And you see that two of the probabilities are uh, positive and two are negative. Okay, so here is a proof. It will require a bit of uh, case analysis. Let's, let's put the data again. So we have, this is C1, CA, CB, CN. And the CK plus 1 is equal to Z1. And at this position we have the CB, at this position we have the CA and ZN, and all the other stuff is just copied. Now, um, yeah, and the, and the W of this pair, CK, CK plus 1, the weight is equal to B minus A. Now, uh, now we look at at the i. If the i is not in the four indices that I I already display up there, b minus one b. If it's not in this, then then it's touching two elements which are the same, uh, and also. The C, CK and CK plus one are the same, and uh, so tau i CK equals tau i CK plus one. They act the same on both, and therefore uh, the W prime meaning the W of CK prime, CK plus one prime is equal to B minus A, unchanged. You can, you can again apply this transposition on one of them and you get the other one. Okay, so now uh, second case, if I equals A minus one. Um, now if if tau I C acts on both 
Meaning the A, the A is re, uh, transposed with its predecessor, the CB is transposed with its predecessor, then, then the width of the transposition between the two is increased by one. W prime equals W plus one. Uh, and if tau I C is active only on one of the two, well, um, let's let's uh, say on. Dk, and what can we what can we say that we can see that the the width of dk prime dk plus one prime uh, is by by triangle inequality or by by the definition of the width you can you can first do uh, redo the operation and then take the original one. So um, we can write this as the width of CK prime CK. So this would be a redoing, redoing it. This is a adjacent transposition between the two uh, plus the width of CK uh, CK plus one prime. But, and, but this is equal to CK plus 1 and so this is equal to 1 and this is known so this is uh, W plus 1 yeah and then uh, we have the case that uh, if tau I C is inactive on both and we have that uh, there is no change. Yeah, and now and now we we look. Uh, it's gone, but we remember that uh, that the probability that we are active is at most one half. We for the activity we we, we had the uh, the one half in the. And this is because we choose the C. This is giving us a one half probability that we stay. So uh, the probability uh, that uh, tau I C is inactive on both is at least one half. So uh, what we get is that the expectation of W prime is upper bounded by uh, W plus one half. Yeah. So in in at least one half of the cases it's not changed, and in, in the worst case in the other half we have added one to the W prime. To the width of the new pair. Where are the other cases? Which case is missing? We are in the situation i equals a minus one, and this expectation, this statement is just for this oh, case. Just for this case. Oh, just yes. for this case. Yes. Uh, and and now um, if i equals b, the same. Analysis. So, if you want, you can re put your uh, revert revert the order on p, and uh, so this is the metric. <coughs> now, now we come to the next case. Uh, if i equals a, and we are going to make an additional assumption, namely that. Uh, 
B is not equal to A plus 1. So that's the trans transposition we are looking at is not a closed transposition, it's not adjacent, it has a, has a larger width. Okay, now uh, in this case we note that the uh, A plus 1 is incomparable to the A. I mean, the CA plus 1 exists because we have this assumption and it sits, it sits right here. So here is CA before it and here is CA behind it. They are incomparable. And uh, CA plus 1 is incomparable with CB. Uh, also, CK is equal to CK plus 1. Now, uh, what, we, what we have seen here is that when, when this CK is equal to 1, then we are going to do the adjacent transposition at this point, at, and, we, and we reduce the uh, distance, the width by 1. So, with probability 1 half, CK is equal to 1 and W prime is equal to W minus 1 and uh, with probability 1 half CK is equal to 0 and the, both of them stay where they are and we don't have a change and, uh, and this is telling us that the expected value of W prime is uh, equal, actually, to W minus one half. And again, we have a symmetric case uh, if I is equal to, so this was A, this would now be B minus one uh, the same by symmetry. Okay, so uh, we we are through with the with the four cases, um, and we can or with the five cases. Maybe the most most likely case is the first one, where where we have. We have no no effect on the on the two objects. Now. Uh, Summing up, if this condition be not equal a plus one holds, then uh, the expected value of W prime is equal to well. In most cases, you always have a have the W and then you have some, sometimes a plus one half and sometimes a minus one half. And, uh, and the plus comes in in the cases, and this is not equal, it's, in, it's upper bounded. Uh, and, and the thing we get here is PA minus one minus PA minus PB minus one uh, plus yes, this is this is the uh, thing that happens here. Now we have to look at the remaining case. 
if b equals a plus 1. Now, uh, if i is not in a minus 1, a, a plus 1, then w prime equals w. Now change. If i in a minus 1, a plus 1, so this is a case where we, that we took first, i minus, a minus 1, and here we didn't, didn't use this condition. So, uh, as before, we can say that the expectation of W prime is upper bounded by W plus one half. And now finally, if, if I is equal to A, if I is equal to A, then, well, ZA is incomparable to CA plus 1. The two can, can flip. We, we can see it on this two. And, uh, and this now is very important. ZK is not equal to CK plus 1. You remember, we, we started with Z0. And then along the path, we define the C, Z values. And this was exactly the condition where we flip it. And it's, yeah. And this is telling us that no matter how we started, one of the two is going to make the transposition, the other one is going to stay. Meaning that the two are the same after the flip. So here we have the expectation of W prime is equal to W minus 1. Yeah, and, uh, and now here is here is a, a nice nice thing. Um, yeah, maybe I, I... This is equal to W plus 1 half PA minus 1 minus 2 PA plus PA plus 1 is equal to W plus 1 half and now we, now we interpret this transposition, th this case here, as a, as a t i i plus 1, and we write uh, p a minus, uh, p a minus 1 minus p a minus p b minus 1 plus p b. So in this case, we can also write it in this very same way. And this completes the proof of our proposition. Okay, so this was this was the main the main verb. Um, now, everything we have been doing so far, we, we've been using the PIs, but we have not been specifying them. And now we are going to to select them in a clever way. Uh, pi is equal to uh, i times n minus i um, divided by k, where k is just a constant for normalization, we need that the sum of the guys is equal to one. So, uh, so the, the k is equal to the sum of i n minus i from one to n minus one, 
and this is equal to n minus 1 n n plus 1 divided by 6 but it doesn't matter uh, yeah uh, so this is this is optimized concave so it's optimized and uh, but the important thing is that it's a concave uh, probability distribution it's think of it like uh, like this and uh, and now, from the from the concavity, we, or from the numbers, we can we can see that p a minus one minus p a is equal to minus n plus two a minus one divided by k. So that uh, that's the thing we are interested in is p a minus one minus p a minus pb minus 1 plus pb so you see uh, we, we are using this and here for the b's we are using the negative of this so the n's cancel out and the minus 1's cancel out and only the, the a and b parts uh, remain and you have one half so the two uh, cancels and it is just a minus b divided by k And, and this is less than zero because the b is larger. Yeah. Uh, so, so the expected distance between them is decreasing. So to to see this, I, I mean, basically what you what you do is you have you have four values on a on a concave function. And uh, you take the outer ones with a plus, and the inner ones with a minus, and this is this is more substantial. Okay, so from this we now we now uh, get now we now we this was this was by just looking at a pair of consecutive guys on on this uh, transition. A transposition pass between x and y, and now we now we look at the pass and we use uh, we use linearity of expectation and uh, it's going to be nice w of x t plus one y t plus one is less equal to the sum of the expectations of the w's of the zk prime zk plus one prime so it's it's less equal because for this pair we may we may find a transposition pass but this this prime stuff need not even be a transposition pass and still we, the weights are defined and, and the optimal transposition pass here may be, may be closer but this is an upper bound good enough yeah so uh, so from what we what we have have shown then we can uh, here this is the stuff that we We can write it as one over one minus k. The width is a minus of this. Uh, the width of k k plus one. And now this is uh, equal to one minus one over k. Width of x t y t. And uh, and now you see uh, the exponential decay here and we find that the probability that xt 
exactly is not equal to yt is upper bounded by well this is if they are different this one can take large values this one would only take a one so this is this is an upper bound on on this probability and this now now you be use what we have seen here, this is 1 minus 1 over k to the t of the original distance and we some, somewhere we, we discussed that the initial distance can be upper bounded by n choose 2. So let's plug in the worst case, n choose 2. Okay, and, uh, and now this is the, the usual e to the minus t over k and choose two. And uh, now remember remember the coupling lemma. We we are interested in seeing under what how large do we need to to choose t so that the probability here gets at most epsilon. And, and we see that this uh, this happens if uh, t is at least k ln n choose to epsilon to the minus one. And now um, now here is k k is uh, essentially. and to the third uh, over six. And you see that this is the time, the number of steps to be done. So it is, uh, you get the mixing time in O of n to the three log n. And yeah. This is this is the result, and uh, yeah. So now we know that we can that we can sample that we can sample uh, a linear extension from an approximate uh, uniform distribution quickly. Let me let me remark two things. The first thing is, um, we we have been using this this non-uniform probability distribution on the positions we choose. Uh, David Bruce Wilson has uh, has kind of uh, changed the analysis slightly. He takes uh, the pi uniform on one to n minus one, but he is he is a working with a weight which is a sinusoidal thing. So we are looking at b minus a and he is looking at a function of b minus a. And, uh, and this is uh, enabling him to get the very same bound for the kasanov kachian chain, for the original uh, nice chain. Yeah, and, and then uh, from here, it would also be reasonable to continue by saying, by, by indicating how to use this result to get uh, F plus for the number of linear extension. Uh, F plus is a fully polynomial randomized approximation scheme. Uh, yeah, but uh, we are already in overtime and uh, there's a good point to close and yeah next lecture will be taken by Piotr by then. <laughs>